Hey everyone, this is Michael. I just want to give you an update on Barbara Pokey Nose. That's what I call her. Her name is, her name is really Barbara Poe, but I call her Poker Nose because she likes to put her nose and stir up things where it really don't belong. And she's doing that again. Well, I found out three weeks ago that Barbara went to Kathy Tucker and asked her out. She said she asked her out plainly. She don't even say a word to Kathy, but all of a sudden she just got an itch up her butt. And just kind of went over there nonchalantly and asked her, Hey, how does Michael say stuff about Bethlehem Seals and the boys? Yeah. And, you know, I like, you know, does he say stuff? What does he say to you about Bethlehem Seals? You know? And, of course, she might as well talk like that because she's acting so retarded because that's the way she's acting. And crazy. Uh, but, you know, of course, Kathy just innocently said, Well, he's quite fond of Bethlehem and the boys. And he loves them, and he misses them, and he would like to see them because of what has happened. He's still grieving because, he, you know, what happened is sad, you know, by the way things went, how they went out. And, uh, you know, and she just said that, and then Barbara took it to a third degree. And, of course, I heard her on the phone talking to Sean, I imagine, yesterday. She was so loud. You can hear her out in the hallway. You don't even have to listen. She's so loud. I guess she's deaf. She's sort of like Danny, and Danny does the same thing. They like to talk so loud, and they like to hear, let everybody, I guess they like to hear themselves talk. Because if they don't hear it, you know, then they, they're not sure about what they're flapping about. So that's why they got to be really loud. Just so everybody can hear it in the building. Yeah, you because know, Barbara does the same thing, too. And I know she just does it to get on my nerves, but it doesn't get on my nerves. It just shows, you know, what kind of gossiper she is. And it shows the kind of level that she's willing to go to maybe possibly lose her residence here at Harbor Square. You know, because I was looking into the lease rules and the things that she's done to me could actually cost her her residency here. You know, like uh, causing unnecessary harassment, uh, stalking, peeping Tom outside my door. This has been going on for seven years. This is not some recent event. As a matter of fact, I had to call the police on her, Hanover County, and they came out here and said, oh, she can basically, you know, everything outside your door, she can do whatever she wants. She can record you. She can hear stuff outside the apartment. She can be up against your door. She can put her ear on her door. Because anything outside your door is not your property. I said, well, I think they need to change the law because this girl's stalking me. You know, she's recording me. She's talking to the neighbors around. That's what she was doing today. Patricia was up there. And the kind of interesting thing about here, she walks with the walker, you know. But you know, today she was up here in the apartment, and she's done that for a year, and I've been documenting it for Social Security because I'm going to let them know about that, call them tomorrow. But she's been walking around here claiming that she's crippled and she needs a downstairs apartment, but she's up here talking to Barbara. And it's pretty interesting how that worked out. But it's been going on for over a year now, and I've been, you know, watching this courtship between the two of them. You know, they exchange information back and forth. But yet she claims she's crippled and she can't come upstairs because she said that out loud with a big grin on her face. But yet she's up here talking to Barbara every other week in her apartment. It's kind of neat how that works out, huh? And yet she's claiming that she needs an apartment because she can't walk upstairs. So, you know, it's pretty interesting there. So we'll let, see what happens with Social Security on that um, tomorrow. Uh, but the thing is, you know, we're not, well, you know, but that's what we're, what we're watching here. Because if they, they think it can start stuff up with me and stir things up, well, I can stir it up too. We'll get them busy filling out papers and things and play around with other things. And, you know, maybe they'll back off. You know, maybe if they get a summons in the mail that they got to go to court, all three of them, then they'll definitely back off because they sure don't got no money. So, I mean, I guess if they want to be sued, I guess, you know, or go to jail for harassing because you can. It's a civil matter. I had the cops over here today. That's what they said. Well, there's no criminal thing going on, is what the officer said. Just to share for public record. This is all documented, by the way, so I'm just sharing it with you what I've been going through with this crazy, sadistic woman across the hallway. And to say the least, you know, I didn't even do nothing to uh, the kids or Beth Ann or, or anything. But the thing is, like, you know, she wants to keep on and on about it because they know the truth. It's just that Sean don't want to say she's sorry. You know, for what she did, that was wrong. And that's why I've been excommunicated out of the family. And that's really the truth. Because, you know, about two weeks before all that went down, all these rumors and innuendos were going on. And, you know, it's like he said, she said game. And she's like, you know, insinuating a lot of stuff. She come up, you know, Sean, you know, we'll go back to Barbara here in a minute. 
Sean's like, you're, I know you're in love with my daughter. And I, I said, well, I do love your daughter, but I don't know about being in love with her because she's a child and I can't love somebody that's a kid. So I don't know where this is coming from. But uh, and then she tells me, you know, that same day, well, I'm going to get my daughter's pelvic exam. I'm going to do a pelvic exam down there. There's only two reasons why you check down there for diseases or check if there was any you know, sexual you know, penetration. And that's the reason why she was getting a check. It wasn't for a general checkup. It was for sexual penetration. Because she made a comment the week before. Uh, you know, somebody put that idea in her head. So I think it was probably Barb or Poe. Because they've been talking off and on for about the next, the last year and a half, two years. You know, up until all this stuff happened. And they're still talking on and off. You know, Barbara gives her weekly updates. And she was on the phone talking to her yesterday. But to come back, the test came back. And everything came back. You know, all fine, but yet since she knows the truth, she still don't want to. You know, the mother doesn't want to believe that. She still thinks something happened with her daughter between me and her. You know, because she's got that in her mind. Somebody's put that idea in her head, and she just keeps going on and permeating. It's just like Barbara, and of course, it ain't even true. None of it is, but the fact still remains. That's what she thinks in her mind, and it's just like you know when the kids were over here, they were coming over here last summer. Barbara was out there in the hallway. And, you know, we were, I was talking in here and they were out there listening to me and the kids all said, including Beth Ann, cause she was out there with them. She said, Michael never did anything inappropriate to me. My mother's just, you know, making, making it up. She's crazy. You know, she just goes on and on about it and she won't leave it alone. And Barbara's like, well, why don't you tell your mother that? And then you don't have to come over here to see me anymore. You can go over there to see him. Like y'all used to. And she said, well, we try to tell our mother the truth, but she don't want to hear it. She just wants to believe this stuff. And, you know, it's like she, her mind is just cemented. And that's where she's locked. And so, you know, that's really what happened. That's how it led up to me to be disfellowshipped from the Shields house. Oh, it's because the truth came out. She went and had her daughter check down there to see if there was anything going on down there. There was nothing. And, uh, you know, it wasn't even the truth. And yet, her mother still thinks in her crazy mind, just like Barbara's crazy mind, twisted mind, that I have did something inappropriate or I'm just a bad person with, and I'm a child predator or something, which I'm not. But, you know, I've been dealing with this, this child predator notion for seven years. And I'm not none of that, you know. They check my record every year and it comes back fine. And every year, Barbara starts up her crap, you know, and going to the landlord and talking to him. And, you know, she did it with the last one. And you're saying all kinds of stuff about me, saying that I did stuff inappropriate with children and saying I lured her granddaughter into her apartment and all and all that stuff was lie, lie, lie. None of that happened. Her granddaughter actually walked over here by herself and I was asleep and she woke me up one morning because I was sleeping here in her door and my door was unlocked. And she ventured over here because Barbara wasn't responsible and wasn't taking care of her daughter, her granddaughter. And that's why she ended up in my apartment because she was wanting to play with somebody. And that's why I believe she came over here. And so she woke me up and I told her to go back over there to her grandmother's. Because your grandmom's going to be worried about you. And then her grandmother came in there and got her. And then this story came out shortly after that. That I lured her in my apartment, which wasn't even true. Because I don't know how you can lure somebody when you're asleep. And that's what Hanover County said. The cops said the same thing. They laughed and said, yeah, I don't know how you would be able to do that if you were sleeping. And your daughter woke you, her daughter or granddaughter woke you up. I said, I don't know either. But, you know, that's the story that's been going around since, uh, around town since about four or five years, about four, four or five years ago. And that's, that's about the same time all this stuff started with Sean. So, you know, I don't know how far back it goes that they've been talking to each other, but, you know, I think they've been talking. And then one day, uh, about two years ago, Sean and then we're out in the parking lot and we got here and got groceries. Sean goes, well, I'm just going to go outside in the car you can put the groceries away, okay, and come on out, and I'll be waiting for you out in the van. Well, I got all the groceries away, and I go out there. I'm sitting there watching her for almost eight minutes talking to Barbara, and then she wasn't trying to get away or nothing, and they, you know, they're exchanging phone numbers and all. I saw her passing papers around, and, you know, they've talked before, evidently. They've been already talking because they were all out there. It was the first time they met. They, the way she postured, they were just casually. And Miriam and all that, you know, and Kathy came to me later on after that and said, you know, she was out there talking to her for over 14 minutes. Did you see that? I said, yeah, I was upstairs watching it in the hallway. And I and I even yelled out to her, you know, why are you out there talking to uh, Barbara? Why are you talking to her? I, I'd ask you not to talk to her. 
And Barbara ran like a rat into her car and, you know, got into her car and started up and drove off. And that's what happened there. It's like a rat running away from a bad, from a, from the exterminator. And of course, you know, you know, Shaw was just acting like she was all innocent. Like, you know, she wasn't doing anything wrong. And she like made up this story and said, didn't you see me try to get away from her? I said, no, I didn't see you try to get away from her. I seen you out there talking for about almost eight minutes to her. Like it was just normal conversation. So why are you telling me that lie? And she got all red in the face and got angry. But she lied about that. She lied about a lot of things. And Sean has lied a lot about a lot of things. And I still love her, but the thing is, you know, she knows the truth, and she don't want to believe the truth, but that's why I was uh, kicked out of that family and why I don't come around. It wasn't because I did anything. It's just because it was just all paranoia, normal, all paranormal or paranoia and schizophrenia kind of stuff, behavior that was going on on Sean's end. And, you know, just, you know, both, both Barbara and them are sort of like that. And they both bipolar, you know, because she's got, Sean's got schizophrenia, with anxiety and bipolar uh, psychosis. And, you know, Barbara's bipolar. And so when you get two of them together, that's why they get along so good. Because people like that tend to get along until, really good until somebody gets mad because they disagree with something. You know, or, you know, somebody misunderstands something and they take it to mean something different so then they don't talk. So, anyway, the kids don't come over here now two barbers. Beth Ann has not been over here for a couple months now. And she thinks I had something to do with it. And just to, to clear the record, I had nothing to do with it. Because I heard Sean over there talking to Barbara in person. She came over here one morning and she was over there talking to her and she's all in there upset and all. And you know, Sean said, well, you know, Michael didn't do nothing. You're the one that did something. That's why they don't come over here. They come over here because you keep talking about Michael and keep bringing up stuff. And I told we told I told you to stop doing that because you know, they don't want to talk about that stuff, and you keep talking about it and you won't leave it alone, and that's what I heard Sean say. But she was pretty loud, and uh, usually she was talking loud, and I guess she wanted me to hear it because I I heard it, and that's what went on in that apartment. That was about two three months ago, and then you know, you know, and of course you know this is the stuff I had to deal with, you know you know, what's been going on with me in my life. And, you know, you know, these are the dragons you got to deal with in your life. You know, some people like to cause trouble and that, you know, they have mentally ill issues and they have problems, but you still have to love them anyway. And if people marry people like this, you can still marry people like this, but you have to be a special person to marry someone like this. Cause it takes a lot of love and patience and understanding more so than what most people have to have a wife that is like this. But if you do get a wife like this, you know, love them. Because if you really love them, you're not going to care about the mental illness. You know, or the quirks that they have because you're going to overlook those. And that's what Charlie did when she mar when he married her. And I think it's wonderful. But they say, you know, if you can do it, it's just hard. To, you know, it can be very hard and taxing on both the children and also on the husband. You know? And that's why he retreats to, you know, to go upstairs to get away from her sometimes. Because it does get a little taxing sometimes. Because, you know, he doesn't have any quiet between the kids and Sean. And, uh, you know, at times, that's what he told me. That's what he does. He goes in the study to get away from all the noise, you know, to get away from all the stuff, you know, all the things that she does. Sometimes it gets on his nerves, you know, like stuff like that. What I was referring to earlier, you know, saying that people are doing things that they're not doing and things like that uh, kind of thing. And so that's always been an agenda. And, you know, it's like Sean, when I was with her two times at Walmart, she said that two people were trying to pick up on her or flirt on her, and they weren't. They were just trying to help her with the groceries. And she she overread and thought they were trying to, you know, flirt with her. I said, well, did, they, did he touch your boobs? Did he, did he try to caress you or hug you? And she said, no. I said, well, he's not flirting with you. I think, I think he's just an associate. I think you're just meet, reading into something that's not happening that you think's happening. And that really didn't happen. And I think you need to just calm down and stop it. And that's what I said, because he's not doing that. You know, and he wasn't, because I saw the whole thing. Both times, two different times that happened, when I was with Sean at Walmart, that's what happened. So I know she reads into things a lot, and that's what happened here with her daughter. And with, you know, everything else that happens. A lot of things that happens with her, it's like that, with a lot of people. And Barbara, it's the same way. And Barbara does that too. And that's why I said for them not to talk to each other. Because I know how volatile those two people can be. Because it's like 
throwing fire or gasoline on a fire. You get two people together, man, they feed off of each other. When they're both paranoid and worried and, you know, they're bipolar and they have anxiety issues, I mean, it's a bad mixture. When you get two people like that, I mean, you can just make other people just, you know, just kind of, you know, make people go crazy. Because they're both controlling and they're both strong, you know, thinkers and they all, they both got their view and their temperament and, you know, then they got all that stuff going on. It's like a big, it's like a big old fire pit. So, you know, they kind of feed off each other like the police officer put it. I like the way they said it because it's just energy feeding off of each other because they're just telling each other all kinds of things. And then that's what caused all the stuff to happen with me and the kids, I really do believe, because she was talking to Barbara. Sean was talking to Barbara Poe over here for about over two years. And that's what led to me to be ex excommunicated out of the family because of all the stuff she was telling her. Because she'd be picking me up a lot of times and she would be a little pissed off. Sean would. And I asked her what's wrong and she wouldn't really tell me anything. And usually when she's like that, it's because she's mad about something. And she don't want to talk about it. And I knew, you know, the last, you know, year or so before all this stuff happened, you know, uh, that's the way she was acting. And then she went and took a job from me from Grove Avenue Eye Center. You know, she did that commercial. And, of course, the doctor told me, you know, that we used, we, we, uh, we had her do the commercial, but it wasn't what we wanted because her voice and all wasn't what we wanted. You know, we... You know, I, I really want you to do it, Michael. And we're going to have you do it eventually. We're going to have you do the commercial. But we just can't do it because we uh, had her. She talked us into it, and I let her do it. And it wasn't the stuff that we needed. So she took that work from me, and then she took three other jobs from me. And then because I wouldn't tell her about anything, she made a big scene at Walmart one day, too. Sean did. Because I wouldn't give her any jobs so she could get free computer work from her friend Mark. Because that's where she was getting the information from. And I was losing business because she was taking it from me. And she figured just because she gives me rides around that she could do this. You know, that was her excuse to justify for her behavior. Because that's what controlling people do. That's how they think. And, uh, you know, of course, I, I, I did many hours. You know, computer work for her for free. You know, I counseled her and her, just her husband and her children for free. Uh, you know, I didn't charge her thing for it. She said, because I don't have a, I don't have a license that she she thinks of me less. That's the way she came across because I didn't have a license to counsel, to be a counselor. So she thought it would be less. But even though, you know, any another here or there, she would go to a counselor and they would tell her the same thing, where she had to pay to get them, you know, to pay them. And they told her exactly what I told them. So, you know, whatever. But neither here or there. But that's that's really what happened there, folks. And uh, this is what I've been dealing with for the last several years, you know. And with Barbara, she's been doing this longer. You know, Sean was five and a half years. And, of course, uh, Barbara was, uh, you know, was the whole seven, almost going on eight years now. She's been doing this kind of thing to me and trying to say I'm doing things and and, 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 pat and spreading things around with the neighbors because she was talking to some people in here today, stirring up things and stirring the drama up. And that's what she's doing, you know, based off of that. She tried to talk to Kathy po you know, Kathy Tucker to go over to the Shields house to talk to her to talk to the parents of Beth Ann Shields and the kids and all and to tell them that I was obsessing over her and and of course that was not even true. I don't even talk to Beth Ann. You know, I I don't communicate with her face to face on the phone or any otherwise. And I haven't I would like to talk to her and the boys, but I haven't been able to see them because the the parents don't want me to see them. And that's the real truth about the whole thing. And I haven't seen him. It's been over a year. But, you know, she's you know she's still telling, you know, I've heard her over there saying I'm still talking to her. So she's talking to Sean and telling her that. And so she's causing a lot of drama there at home. And it's like they all got together. It's like I told Sean, just leave her alone. But, of course, Sean don't listen because when people have mental illness, they don't see things the way the rest of us do. Because they have their own idea and they have their own paranoia. And they just drive, and they're drive, driven on that, and they just like to permeate on things that are bipolar kind of psychosis, like Sean has, and like Barbara is, and they just like to permeate and keep talking about things, and that's basically what happened. That's where we are today. It's where it's escalated to this level, and this is what's going to happen. Barbara uh, came over to my house today outside the door. I called the cops, and what's going to happen is I'm going to keep calling the cops on her for public record because of the stalking and all that's going on, and the harassing things that are going on here. And if it keeps going on, I'm gonna I'm gonna summon her to court on civil charges of harassment and on stalking, and I can definitely get her for that because that's all civil charges because that's what she's doing. 
So just to give you an update, this is what's going on in summation. So this is public record, and this is what I've been going through. There's got to be a God, and I know there is a God. I know God's got something special for me to have to deal with this type of stuff. There's got to be something special coming around the corner, because this is really bad. So, you know, I just want to let everybody know what's really going on, and what I've been going through, because none of this stuff is true. It's all allegations. It's all hearsay. It's all blowing out of proportion. And it's just it's just really wrong, because it's done wrong to the kids, because I can't see them, and they know it's not true, because they all said it out here. Like I told you, they all said it, including Beth Ann. Nothing was true about that, but our mom just kept on coursing it out of us and kept talking, and that's what she kept saying until I actually told her what she wanted to hear, and that's what she said. That's exactly what happened. So there you go, and she's wrong, and, you know, she don't want to admit it because, you know, she just don't want to tell the truth, so that's real truth there, and that's really what went down, okay? And that's really the whole synopsis of the whole thing, and this is all documented, by the way. As Michael DeSilvis, please pray for me and please pray for the Shields. That's why I hope that we can all come back together because this is all crazy stuff. And it's ridiculous. It's all because she's talking to Barbara and that's why all this happened. You know, her pumping and putting all these ideas in her head and things and getting her all, you know, going, you know, really overboard with things because she was talking to her, you know, why this was happening. So, you know, I just want to let you know what's going on and what I've been under. And that's the real perspective of it, the analysis of it, and what really happened. And, of course, all this is all slander, it's all lies, and it's all not true. But, of course, you know, you know they're going to try to make something out of something, even when there's nothing, because that's what paranoia does. I'll see you later. Michael De Silva's just a little profile perspective on some individuals here in Harbor Square and what really happened with the Shields family. Take care.